Hello fellow wine lovers and welcome to Wine With Me. I'm your host, Michelle Emmerich, and today I have a very special episode for you. This is the first of a five-episode series where we look at the four different quality levels of Burgundy, starting with the regional level, going to village, premier cru, and finishing with grand cru. For you to have a better understanding of what the AOC laws do to affect these wines, I would highly suggest to watch this video first. This is made by the unknown winecaster, one of my favorite YouTubers out there, and it explains in very easy to understand details how the AOC laws were created and how they affect the wines produced in the region. So look at Burgundy, of course we are in France, and Burgundy or Bourgogne is the largest AOC of that region. So 54% uh, of all wine produced in that area is in this AOC level, which is the, we call it the bottom of the pyramid. For Bourgogne Blanc or uh, White Burgundy, you have five grapes that are allowed to be used, uh, and they are Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Melon de Bourgogne, and Aligoté. We will be looking only at Chardonnay for this series. So this video is uh, on a wine that is on the 2015 vintage, and I would like to talk to you about that a little bit, because 2015, if you speak with any wine geek or enthusiasts out there, their eyes will sparkle when you mention, oh, I have a 2015 or whatever, uh, because 2015 was an exceptional vintage in Burgundy. When Spectator rated the, the, that vintage uh, tw uh, 95, previously 2014 for whites was 96, and then nothing else was that high all the way back to 2002. So as you can imagine, exceptional vintages aren't often uh, uh, available. Now, why are these uh, uh, why are these vintages exceptional? So for 2015, this is what happened. We had a wet, uh, mild winter that replenished the uh, water reserves on the soil. Then we had a little more rain, a few more inches of rain in July and uh, an inch or, two or so in August that refreshed the vineyards after a long, dry, hot summer, right? So that's what you want. Dry, hot summer that has this uh, uh, ripe fruit, but then a little bit of rain, a little bit of uh, uh, cool, cool water, cool wind to cool the vineyards down to maintain the acidity levels. Then right before harvest, it cooled off a little more, again, preserving those acidity levels that we so love in Chardonnay from Burgundy, right? So that combined created an exceptional uh, vintage. Uh, most wineries picked, started picking early September and finished by mid-September, right before the rain came down again and diluted the, the sugars on the grapes. So 2015, if everything was done properly, was a, an incredible vintage that produced incredible wines. So what is the wine that we're looking at today? This is Jean-Claude Poisson. This is, as you can see on the label, 100% Chardonnay uh, from, uh, and it is mentioned as a Bourgogne Blanc. So again, as I mentioned, Bourgogne Blanc could be five different grapes, but this one uh, is 100% Chardonnay. So Jean-Claude Poisson is um, a vigneron in uh, the southern portion of France near the city of Macon that uses a cooperative called Julienaz uh, Chantre where he brings his grapes, uh, which are from a hillside limestone vineyard, uh, or vineyards as uh, uh, they are not from one uh, specific location, and he makes the, the wine there, and he's able to sell it. And this is great news for you and me, because that means that we can get great Burgundy for a very affordable price. So, cheers to that, always. Okay, so let's start. Uh, first, I, uh, as usual, I will mention that I will be utilizing the Court of Master Sommelier's tasting grid in order to keep things fair and objective. You can also follow along by clicking the link in the description. Uh, you can suggest the wine for the next video or series by leaving your comment in the comment section. And you can also follow me on Instagram and uh, Twitter for updates on coming videos or to suggest uh, wines for the following videos as well. Okay, so let's start. I have to open this bottle first. 
This is the first time I'm tasting this wine. Okay, so the wine has a, a pale straw color with a little bit of a platinum um, tint to it. Platinum green, very slight. The wine is clear. It is uh, star bright. It is, it is very bright and, and, and it just sparkles with light. Medium concentration. There is no rim variation. The tears are quite prominent. I wouldn't say they're heavy. Um, I would categorize them as medium plus. There is no evidence of gas or sediment on the nose. It's a wine of medium, medium intensity. It's a clean wine. There are no flaws. And uh, it, it, it smells young, youthful still. Yes, it's four, almost four years old, but it's still, you, you can still get the, the crispness and the youth of this wine. Fruit comes across as tart green apple, white raspberries, underripe pineapple, white peaches, lemon and lime, mostly lime, a little bit of a citrus zest as well, lemon zest possibly. The fruit is fresh, Slightly underripe to fresh. And then there's a non fruit component. There's quite a bit of a um, inorganic earth um, or mineral earth, if you wish, such as chalk, limestone characteristic, like wet ro river rocks. There's a little bit of a white tea or um, white flower component happening here, but very fresh. There's nothing old, nothing um, aged in here. I do not get any sign of oak on the nose, but I would like to confirm that on the palate. The wine is dry with a medium plus body. It's not the heaviest of the Chardonnays that I've tried, but it has something there. The fruit on the palate com confirms the nose. So fresh, uh, underripe to fresh, tart uh, uh, green apples, um, white peaches, white raspberry, Underripe pineapple, lemon and lime. On the palate, it comes across a little more like, like sweet Meyer lemon. Not as tart as the nose was, but still on that citric zest characteristic. No fruit remains the same as well. Possibly with a little more of a... Metallic, that wet rock characteristic, slate, chalk. There's somewhat of a salinity, 
but it is not dominant. It's more of a secondary note. Phenolic bitterness, very mild, if any. Alcohol medium. Acidity. Medium plus. It's tricky because the fruit being ripe and there is a roundness to this body, the acidity gets masked a little bit. So I have to wait and see how it responds on the finish. And the acidity is what is driving the finish. I would not say it is high, but it is on the medium medium side of, 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 of the spectrum. Finishes medium plus. It is lingering a little longer than I expected. <laughs> Complexity medium. There is a ton of fruit. There's some, some um, <laughs> mineral, minerality going on here. I would like to see a little more depth. Maybe perhaps if the wine had a, a little bit of uh, oak usage, which I am not getting any. I believe this wine to be aged in uh, stainless steel or, or fermented in stainless steel. There is a a creamy characteristic, a texture to the <coughs> excuse me to this wine, uh, which I believe to be due to some possible lees aging, malolactic fermentation. But it is tastefully done. It's not over overtly uh, abused. Pairings um, due to the medium. <laughs> Uh, acidity on this wine I would um, I wouldn't push it against heavy dishes as I've suggested some other ch Chardonnays uh, however there are a few things that I would like to suggest in fact uh, some local pairings for this wine uh, from Burgundy so uh, Escargot uh, so Escargot de uh, Bourgogne uh, or Escargot with the uh, herb butter uh, so nothing too heavy, something that, that the acidity of this wine would pair perfectly with. Uh, also on that salinity, that uh, minerality there would be perfect with this cargo. Uh, also, Poulet de Bresse, uh, which is uh, one of the, the, the standards of, of, of chicken dishes in Burgundy. Uh, Poulet de Bresse uh, would go phenomenal with, with uh, this Chardonnay. And... Uh, uh, Pochus as well, which is um, a yeah, fish stew uh, made with um, two lean fish and uh, two uh, fattier fish. Uh, the examples are perch um, and uh, I would say uh, walleye for that fatty characteristic as well. Um, for, for us here in the US, of course, walleye. Um, other than that, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.